Ethiopia on Tuesday rejected a pact between its breakaway region of Somaliland and Ethiopia. The Memorandum of Understanding allows Ethiopia to use a major port with access to the Red Sea in return for recognition as an independent state. According to Reuters news agency, Somalia says the agreement has no legal force. Somaliland seceded from Somalia more than 30 years ago but has not been recognized by any nation as an independent state. To find out more about this issue, viewers Douglas Umpuga reached Dr. Sadia Ali Adan, a physician, humanitarian activist, and a freelance writer. Before we talk about that, I think it's very important to have the context. As you're probably aware of, Eritrea gained its independence in 1991, and that's when Ethiopia lost access to the sea. Since then, Ethiopia has been reliant on Djibouti, for this maritime trade. So uh, to expand this port access, it has been searching on options and considered Sudan, considered Kenya. And in 2018, it attempted to acquire a portion of the better port of Somalia, but that deal did not materialize. So Abi has been trying for a long time. And of course the country is landlocked, but also there is a conflict in Ethiopia. Uh, Nabi still has a crisis within his country. I, I believe he's trying to sort of uh, deflect or divert attention from his own weaknesses, uh, his own problems, the conflict within his own country, and trying to convince his people that he's doing the best that he can to acquire a port on their behalf. So uh, is the Somali government justified in rejecting and condemning this deal? Of course, uh, Somalia is uh, justified in rejecting this agreement. It has also recalled this ambassador from uh, Ethiopia, emphasizing uh, this right to defend uh, this sovereignty. So Somalia has that right to do so, and every other nation would do that. In fact, Somali people are asking for more. They're asking the Somali government to send back the Ethiopian ambassador, as well as to uh, evict the Ethiopian uh, soldiers that are part of the ATMOS, which is the African uh, force in Somalia. Somalia may be justified, but uh, what options has the Somali government got to halt, to stop this arrangement? You know, that's a very go- good question, especially when Somalia doesn't have a strong military and it has its own squabbles uh, between the political leaders and the conflicts within the, uh, the federal government conflict with some of the regions in Somalia. That seems as a challenge, uh, but what remains optimistic for the Somali people and those who are interested in protecting Somalia are the Somalis and how they have united from Hargeisa to Kismayo. So uh, that is the hope. And there are, of course, forces in Somalia, but those also could unify. But the problem now is Ethiopia might have ignited a problem within the region where maybe they have empowered the Al-Shabaab to recruit more uh, young men uh, for this particular issue. Uh, And that can be a serious problem for the region, not only for Somalia. Dr. Sadia Ali Adan is a Somali-born physician who is also a human rights activist and freelance writer. She spoke with viewers Douglas Mpuga from the U.S. state of Virginia. The federal government of Somalia this week reported that two Al-Shabaab commanders were killed in an operation in the lower Shabala region. It comes just days after the government confirmed a senior military commander involved in attacks in Kenya has also been killed in an airstrike by the United States. Meanwhile, Somali government forces have returned to towns they vacated in August in anticipation of another round of military campaign against Al-Shabaab. Viewers Harun Maruf spoke to Abdullahi Mohammed Ali Sambaloshi, former chief of the National Intelligence Agency, on the lessons the Somali government has learned from previous setbacks. I think the government has learned its lessons in the past, and now they are having better strategies, better plans, and um, their soldiers are experienced, and they have not been careful before. Now they are moving every step very carefully, and um, strategically they understand the threat of al-Shabaab, and I think they have improved their intelligence assets. They know exactly what's going on within al-Shabaab. Before, they have been trying to capture bigger cities, 
Now the new strategy or the new plan is to clear and uproot al-Shabaab in the rural areas, in the foresty, in the pushes, in the small water towns. Uh, so it's comprehensive uh, kind of plan, whereas before it has been a little bit in hurry. But is the government in danger of underestimating uh, this war and al-Shabaab? And uh, as we have seen, some government officials have been saying that al-Shabaab will be rooted out within a few months. That hasn't happened. How long do you think this war can last? Uh, nobody. It is absolutely wrong to underestimate your enemy and, over, and on become overconfident or overestimate your standard. Always your tone must be balanced. Your rhetoric must be reasonable. If this war is easy, we could have finished it a long time ago. This war is not easy, but it is doable. I believe Shabab has been considerably degraded. We are on the verge of defeating them, but we are not yet there to eliminate them. So gradually, we are improving, we are getting experience. Gradually, we are understanding the dynamics of the conflict. Gradually, we are adapting ourselves uh, because Shabab, the best thing of al-Shabab is they, they become adaptable. We are also becoming adaptable. We are adapting the situation. We are understanding the ta- tactics. Uh, and gradually, we will be able to have the upper hand. Now we are having an upper hand because we have pushed them from Iran, from Middle Shabele, from Galgadud, from Mudu. We are cornering them in their last strongholds. On Sunday, the Somali government reported that two Al-Shabaab commanders were killed in an airstrike. Uh, recently, the government also reported that a high-ranking Al-Shabaab commander, Ma'alim Ayman, was killed in Chilib area. These airstrikes have been continuing for some time, for years. Are this effective? How helpful these airstrikes are to the government and degrading Al-Shabaab? I believe this is this is important, and uh, this is having a great impact on our Shabab in terms of their operational capabilities, in terms of their their leadership ranks. Maybe for me and for for you, it may not be uh, impactful, but for them, it's affecting them very badly. Abdullahi Mohammed Ali Sambaloshi is the former chief of Somalia's National Intelligence Agency, who is now involved in local mobilization against Al Shabab. He spoke with viewers Harun Manruv. Widespread power outages have returned to South Africa following a brief respite during the festive period. The blackouts, commonly referred to as a load shedding, are a critical measure aimed at preventing a complete collapse of the strained electricity grid. ESCOM, the state-owned power utility, has announced the implementation of load shedding from 5 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Tuesday, exacerbating the challenges faced by the country's power infrastructure. The power cuts are set to escalate from stage 2 to stage 3, indicating that South Africans can anticipate blackouts up to nine times a day over four days for two hours each time, or nine occurrences over eight-day span four hours each time. In a statement shared on the social media platform X, ESCOM revealed that load shedding had been temporarily halted for 18 days during late December and New Year's Day. This marked the longest and uninterrupted period without load shedding in South Africa since the summer of 2022, as confirmed by the power company. The resumption of power cuts underscores the persisting challenges faced by South Africa's electricity infrastructure and the ongoing efforts required to address and stabilize the national power grid.